With Skahoy technology, it's almost always a yes when you want to do the impossible, the unthinkable, the unorthodox. And now I know some of you won't listen for the rest of this video because you're consumed with finding all the objections you can to that claim. But for the rest of you, I suggest we put it to the test. So we'll set out to control an ATEM switcher, a TriCaster and a Digico audio mixer in this video, all from the same Skahoy panel. Well, in fact, two panels, a Colorfly and a Waveboard combined. And we'll go beyond the basic classic fader control. We will, for any selected channel, also control advanced features that are available, such as equalizers, expanders, compressors, limiters, routing and gates. And this is why the Colorfly is today's star of the show. It has a beautiful section of buttons and knobs perfect for such additional settings. We'll start with the ATEM software control. It looks like this. We have four channels, faders on the Colorfly assigned to the first four inputs on the ATEM uh, switcher here. And we uh, can quickly um, show you that the uh, audio, advanced audio control we do, has the lower button associated with selecting the channel. So anytime I press this, it actually changes what this section is dedicated to over here. We'll see that in a moment. Usually this is actually muting. So muting is hidden up here on this button, which is uh, red when it's muted and uh, not when it's not muted. We also have a solo button here. It doesn't work on the constellation we are connected to today for some reason. Um, it's, it's not supported in the switcher. We have balance we can control on the encoder knob above each channel. So that's always readily available. It doesn't need you to select the channel to do these things. So it's like many other audio boards, you know, there's like a channel, dedicated channel with dedicated functions. And then you have like a section over here that will allow you to do the more advanced stuff. And you see that we are controlling the ATEM. This is a label that will actually sh show you if we change the system around. So now, yeah, we are controlling ATEM. And then we have pages we can select on these buttons here. So let's start with the input. On this one, we can adjust the gain. And the gain is seen in the software UI up here. So if I'm turning this knob, you can see I have gain control. Okay, so far so good. We also have delay on some channels. I think that applies to only the microphones and we don't we, we don't use that here. But let's go to the EQ because that is kind of the uh, interesting thing uh, of what I, I claimed that we would be looking at in today's video. I can toggle it on and off. You see that's changing up here. I can also basically page between band one through three and then band four, five and six. All right, so we are on band one, two, three right now. We um, then select uh, band one, band two, band three. The, the band one has slightly different label. It is telling you it's off and that's good to know because it means that anything we do up here, we can do it. We can change the frequency, but the band is turned off. If I hold down my shift key, I can turn it on. So turning on and off the bands is just hidden beyond uh, below this uh, shift key that is in my little menu navigation here. All right, so band one is turned on. I was able to change the frequency and I can also set the, the type uh, of, of band it is. If I'm in one of these, like I can set the gain value as well. So that is like full control of that band. Let's go to band number two. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the values you see right here. So we have the frequency I can set. I can also choose the, the, the type of this one. And some of those types is bringing up additional control. You see additional control in the software UI will now give you access to those settings also on the Skahoy panel. So it's like, you know, the full amount of features that is broken out here. That's uh, pretty impressive, I think. We are now on band number three. Uh, let's change it to a different type just quickly here. If I hold down my shift key, you can also see that these um, um, settings here in the middle can be swapped around. I have the uh, frequency available uh, also, etc. So that's how the ATEM switcher's EQ is working. I think you can um, easily see that Anything in that UI is probably found in this configuration. I want to move on then to the expander. So let's go into the dynamics. And here we see, um, if I pick the expander here, that I can basically turn it on and off. That's the first thing. And then we have a choice between expander and gate. So that's like this toggle. And then we have this one that will bring timing settings up on the upper knobs. Once again, uh, I think if we, um, no wait. Yes, uh, we have timing and so this is like a menu between timing and level. So let's just change a little bit these values here. 
So you see the attack rate is changed by this knob. We have hold here and we have release down here. That is these settings down there. If I go to levels, then we can see the threshold and the range is changing. If I uh, switch over to the expander, then we have more options for levels. So let's just try those out. And then uh, going back to timing, you can see these. Obviously, I'm just doing something in the blind to show you that we have control of these settings. And we also have very nice feedback because you see the values in milliseconds and, um, and dB and ratio, etc. in the displays of the knobs. Another great reason to go for Skyhoy panels. There's usually not a single knob or fader that has a physically printed label on it. We have this place that will show you values and labels for what buttons do and what knobs do. And, and that's how we wrote. This is how we create flexibility. And then you can configure and map that any way you want. We can move on to the compressor here. So that's like this section. I can turn it on and off again with a toggle button. I have timing and limiting. Uh, or levels uh, assigned. So let's just quickly move the buttons around so you can see changes in the UI as a consequence of me rolling the buttons. I go on to the limiter, again, levels and timing. So uh, well-known menu structure by now, and you see those values are changing down here in response to my rotating the encoder knobs. That's great, yes. And here we have a fader, ha, ah, a fader. Okay, so that was the atom. And the same is true for channel two and input three and input four. So as I'm, let's, let's just check, you know, let's not take his word for it. We are now looking at number four. Let's pick up the equalizer. So we go to the equalizer. Will this frequency actually change? We are currently, let's just make sure we are the right place. Band three, we are changing that frequency. Yes, it did work. We will move on to the TriCaster, which is the next in line. So this is the UI of the TriCaster the, the, um, uh, and the, the audio faders are down here. I can move those. Oh, did you not notice? I can do the same over here. Flying faders, of course they are. Now, um, the basics. Yes, we have fader control of the four, uh, first four channels that we have mapped down. We can also mute them on and off. And I think we may have solo. Yes, we do have solo on this blue button, and then up here we actually have pan. And uh, let's quickly take a look at that. So now we need to open up the channel. So that is click that gear icon right there. We go to input settings. You can see the pan is shown right there. And as I'm now doing that for channel number two, we see the pan is changing around. So far, so good. Let's move into the processing part because this is where we can use that section over there. So now I select my channel. Like before, we have the, the TriCaster here. We can go to inputs. And now we have gain for this particular input. Let me see. Maybe gain was actually inside of this point. Let me see. Uh, the, yeah, okay. Yeah, so these are the, the, the levels that we are changing. Not the same as this one. That's a different level, right? But the gain levels can be set on this knob over here. We also have a delay uh, factor, which is the value that you see right there. So that can be changed. Audio follow video is a setting we can turn on and off. That is reflected by the color down there. And then we can move on to the EQ, where I definitely think we'll be moving in here. That's a seven band equalizer fixed. So I have um, first four bands here, and then I have band four through seven here. So let's just uh, turn the knobs and um, let's do that like radically so you can see what's happening. now. When I go to four to seven, I have basically still the, the middle band uh, in my hand, and then I can adjust the other two right there. And there's the reset button, so press and hold. It's all resetting out, that's super nice. I can toggle it on and off, so that's essentially this little checkbox up here. We can move on to the noise gate. That is also in here, so if it's turned on. Uh, okay, maybe that's all we can do, and there's a level which we can set, yes, all right, so that's possible as well. Let me move the mouse so you can actually see it. That's great. Now, um, moving on to the compressor here. The compressor is already turned on. We want to see settings inside. They are there. We can reset these settings. Let's just do that. Then we can play with them. So go to levels. See, that is a menu arrangement like the ATEM. So there's like, even though it's two different systems, there's a consistency here. As far as we can make it consistent, we do so, and we can change uh, threshold, we have ratio, we have the uh, makeup gain, and moving on to timing, we can also uh, work with the last two parameters that we are missing, resetting it all, 
back to normal. We can turn it on and off with the toggle button here. There is a pattern arising from this one. Now we have uh, routing that is uh, not possible in the ATEM, but we have it over here. So the routing for this one, um, we are currently routing output number two. So you set the output target uh, here. So that is uh, now output number one. I am looking at routing one to uh, uh, four. We also have five to eight. And uh, for each of these, I can essentially just put checkboxes in here, all right? So let's just do that like crazy. Okay, that was a whole row. I can now go to the fifth row and I'm able to basically do the same. So routing can be done. That's super great and awesome. Um, yes, that's basically the TriCaster guys. So um, all these advanced audio features of the TriCaster is implemented by Skahoy, mapped down into the advanced audio configuration we're exploring today, where we're not just taking the waveboard and the color flies faders, um, but we are also applying a section of advanced audio control with this, this part of the color fly. Maybe some of you know that color fly is actually designed and thought to be used for camera shading, but again, any Skahoy controller is not bound to that destination or that destiny. It is designed so that we can flexibly use it for anything else. And even your suggestions might be useful. If you have ideas about how to creatively apply our products, then feel free to, uh, to come to us with those. Last thing we'll look at is Digico. The Digico audio channels are also controlled by faders on the waveboard, so we can control faders. You see it in the software. I'm sorry that it's a little bit difficult to see it all the way to the bottom, but yeah, they are there. Can I do it the opposite way? Just want to see. Yes, we can see the faders are moving on the panel. Can we also mute things? Yes, we can. So, and if it works the other way, yes, I can change that here as well. What about soloing? We also see soloing on these channels and we have adjustment of the balance on the knob on top here. So all that is like as we would expect and just like with the Atom and the TriCaster, we select the channel by using the pink button here. And that will reflect on the section on the color flag that has to do with the uh, settings inside. Let's explore that. We um, can go to the input page and here we find things like gain. So now you need to observe in the software, just keep a close eye on what's going on in this section up here, okay? So as I am turning this knob, you can see that I'm adjusting gain. Not for channel one, but channel two, because I picked channel two, sorry about that. So maybe let's just move over here. Can I pick that? Okay, I don't know why this is colored like this. I'm no expert in this software. Now, um, I, I can do the trim. So we see those values are changing. And I can also adjust delay. To do that, I need to open this one up here. And you see these values are adjusted by this encoder knob. And inside of this uh, little extra menu layer here, I hold down my shift key and I can also turn on and off the delay button, which is this little guy. Let's click it here and see that it's turning off here. Phantom power as well, press and hold. You have phantom power enabled, it's shown up there. And uh, we also have, let me see, padding is not, no, it's not shown in here as far as I can see. Uh, so uh, I think, yeah, we have most of those things uh, added in here. Yes, uh, let's move on to equalizer. So on the equalizer, we, by shutting down this and seeing this, we can adjust the, the four bands that we have in the equalizer. We've even color coded them, right? So if we pick the red band, um, as a start, then we have the settings down here available on the knobs up here. We can go to the yellow band and change those. We have the green band. There we go. If I press and hold the button, then they are resetting to default values. So that's uh, good to know. I, it's not every time it, it is the case, but on some of the behaviors we put down on these buttons, this is possible and uh, very useful to, uh, to be able to do so from time to time. The filters, um, uh, kind of what we see up here. So we uh, have the, um, this is a low pass filter, I think, and the high pass filter. So the frequency can be set and you can turn it on and off on the encoders. And you also see that reflected in the UI here. Let's just try to change that. You see, again, with anything Skahoy, we are doing everything we can because we cannot always break the rules of the manufacturer. It's not always that they give us this opportunity, but we will usually stay very synchronized with the devices we control. So any change in the device settings will immediately be reflected in our panels and vice versa. So this is um, a 
classic sign of a great integration and uh, some of what takes the most time of what we do to make sure we are not just sending and praying anytime we you know trigger something but we're actually reading back that feedback so we can actually have a full multi-master scenario running with most devices we can move on to gate as well and we have compressor here we have basically looked at compressor very much like what we um, saw for the uh, other atom and the tricaster one thing that is special is that we have multiple bands so um, most people would use band number one here and then you have like on and off you have on and off for band number two band number three and they will have individual settings so the frequency on this band uh, is another one that it is on band number two yeah they are four-way buttons so uh, Four-way buttons, if you don't know our technology, this is an amazing hidden feature in many of these buttons that they can actually detect presses on multiple edges. These buttons on the upper and lower edge, these buttons on all four edges. So if you press the lower edge, which is like the most natural thing you would do, you're just cycling through. We have four values we can cycle through here, but if I press the sides, you can see I can go forth and back. So for those that know the secrets of four-way buttons, that is a very, very useful thing. Actually, that makes them like encoders, very comparable in, in the capacity that they basically have, yes. Okay, um, let's go to sense because uh, that is, for each channel, the opportunity to use the color fly to also um, set how, how much, you know, basically adjust the auxes here. So follow uh, along uh, here, notice what happens if I'm turning this encoder, this one, this one and this one you see I'm changing that I can go to the next sense and next sense and so on and it will continue like that you can have a lot of pages so if you go beyond 16 all the way I think up to 48 yes okay then you have like this button that will actually again four-way button functionality you can go forth and back on the sides of this one but it's just cycling through um, if you hold down shift and we're on the first page you can see how it is possible to also toggle them on and on uh, on and off uh, so I'm doing that uh, just now, despite of them already having settings. So they are automatically turned on when you turn them up from um, infin infinity or negative infinity off, basically. So yes, I would also like to show you how these are combined because the power of the waveboard and the Colorfly to host these many different audio devices in one is uh, coming about in a UI that is at one time simple, but also super powerful. What you look at here is the home screen of the Colorfly. The Colorfly is the host, it is the brain, it does everything over this blue cable. We have the connection to the Atom, the TriCaster, and also the Digico uh, audio mixer. This computer is not needed. It doesn't run anything except the UI to let us explore what we are controlling. The waveboard is basically dumb right here it also has the power inside it has the same powerful computer sitting inside of it but right now we have configured it not to play smart in any way except letting the colorfly dictate everything so the colorfly has the wave board on board as a guest so colorfly is the master panel this is the guest panel connecting to the colorfly and the channel configuration this is where we are distributing channels across these two and i want to show you something really cool because if I press the new, then I can add a new channel. And you already see that the panels here, they responded by giving me a page button. But let's just pick something. So if we take the Digico, um, Digico input channels, still device number one that has to match the device ID you see here. If you had multiple Digicos, that would be device two and three and so on, and you would pick two and three if you wanted to talk to those. But now we can just set up input channel five really easily like this. We are already done. Actually, maybe I want to give it a blue color. And let's just try to see what happens if I press this one. Guys, we already, I mean, I don't know if you can see the blue color really clearly, maybe up here. So let's just pick amber instead yes you can see there's like coloring on the channel but my main point is that we now have like two pages we can go forth and back and this one is adjusting audio on channel five of the digico you see it see the fader is moving down here i'm now doing it with my mouse so yes that really works i can select the page and you will adjust channel five settings over here let's try the gain so let's look up here in the top and let's turn this one around and for some reason, I am 
stupid. Either stupid or I don't know what, but I don't see the gain. But I do see the trim and that is next to and the trim is changing. So here I'm falling short of my knowledge of Digico. Why there is no gain on this particular channel? Probably the type of channel. It's probably something else than a microphone. But the point is that it's so easy to add more channels and to have that paging. That paging will continue on all of these. So let's just calculate that. We have like 12 channels here times six. So that is gonna give us 72 channels straight out of this combination of these two. The color fly can also be used like in itself. But in this case, you are looking for advanced audio control. That is the label. We have explored generic audio control, the um, kind of, type of configuration we're looking at called advanced color control. Audio control is also applicable for the Colorfly V3. So uh, you can take that or this one, um, depending on, on how you want to uh, run this. Yes, um, let's, let's just see. We have also auxiliary outputs that we could choose. It would look the same. If you do that for the Digico output here, then it is now auxiliary output. Uh, and you have more or less the same inside of, of the menus here. It might differ a little bit depending on which features are available. If you select the control group here, then you won't have anything but a fader that you can work with because it is uh, just a summing bus uh, as far as I know. The TriCaster has also, uh, this would be true for almost anything, um, potentially. <laughs> it has only inputs in this case. But if we look at the ATEM, then at least, if we go to ATEM uh, audio channels, then you will find that we have audio channels and we have master audio as well that we can assign down uh, here. Uh, audio channel makes sense. Alternative label would allow you a different uh, label in the displays. Color, we just saw that. So all these things can be easily configured inside of here. And that's basically what you need to be concerned about. There are advanced things you can do inside the configuration tab. That is a way for you to actually kind of extend. And um, it is sort of cool because if you think about how much functionality we have packed into this, you will be thankful that you didn't have to code that yourself. Setting all that up that you just saw in this section, that's a ton of work. It's amazing that we can do it. And this is because there's a powerful, powerful, powerful configuration engine underneath. The cool thing is that we've made it possible to extend on top of that using our sections down here. So we are um, basically, for almost any panel and combination, there are a number of sections that you can uh, walk into and configure. In this case, we have background navigation. So it means that we're able to create like a new page on top of this one, let's call it page two. And then um, we can make that transparent um, or, or not. And if I go to page two right now, you see that actually my, my selector down here blanked out. And also it's, it's also true for what you see in, in our simulation here. So on page two, I could now place other actions that I wanted to have. Like I could walk into the ATEM um, list of, of things I can do and then basically assign something to this particular button. Um, and now it's there. And I can assign navigation, so I can go between these two pages if I want. That might be a thing that I could be uh, relevant now that I'm doing it. Okay, 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 okay. I, I did it. So let me just quickly do something that will make this actually work. So um, let's just uh, try my little uh, page here. So now I'm paging in and out of some customization I did on top. But I was really not intending to do that in this video, so that's dangerous land. I <laughs> wanted us to stay on the home screen. But... Um, Apart from the configuration, just choosing the waveboard, adding it in, we also have the devices uh, sitting here. So the ASIM Constellation, the Digico connected to, I had to disconnect my TriCaster for the last part of this demo, so this is why it's disconnected, but earlier it was connected. So that is all good. I'll let you decide if we do the impossible and the unthinkable or not. Personally, I'm fine with less, as long as we get a chance to help you optimize your live production control with our products. I'm still sure that you must be impressed somewhat by what you've seen in this video, maybe a little bit overwhelmed by the options, but please reach out to us, to our sales team and our support team for any questions you might have. And uh, also make sure that you like and subscribe this video. You can follow us on social media so you won't miss out on any news from Scarhoys about new features. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.